everybody. Welcome to the configuration and technical video for Sticks 1. Get my folders and my notes open. So we got your main installation folder over here uh, through Steam or wherever you got your game from. So this is what I'm looking at here. Uh, you got four folders in your main Sticks. Uh, install directory. Uh, this is just a shortcut to the config file on the computer for the game that I can get to quickly when I show you uh, what we're going to do over here. But you will have these three folders. You can just glance through them real quick. Uh, so binaries, preferably Windows 64. You have a 64-bit version of Windows. Uh, this is the Sticks game EXE. This is the one you'll be wanting to run or that you will be having ran when you run it through Steam. I'm using the Steam version of uh, this game. I don't even know if there's a GOG.com version or not. Um, and I have some extra stuff in here uh, because I'm using Reshade, so I have that. That and anything that says Reshade. Those are extra files just related to Reshade that I'm using so that I can uh, put in better anti-aliasing anti -aliasing and uh, adjust colors a little more to my liking and that I think look better or more natural, realistic. More natural is the word I would use. Because um, that's your executable. If you're on a 32-bit 32 32-bit, uh, operating system, then you would be using this executable in this folder. There's just two sets depending on your OS's bit. Then you got engine. Um, none of this is really important. I mean, it obviously is, but there's nothing in here that you really need to mess with uh, to do anything. So you can really ignore the engine folder. And then the sticks game folder. Um, these are the. Uh, config files for the game basically but these are just kind of like the preloaded like when you start the game and you haven't made any adjustments this is just what's being loaded first but this is not what you want to edit to make permanent changes um, none of that's going to matter movies in some of these games this being an Unreal Engine 4 game um, which sticks to is going to be an Unreal Engine 4 game as well. But these would be where the cutscene files uh, would be. Um, I'm guessing this is maybe a. Com I don't know what a CMV is. I'm thinking maybe a bunch of cutscenes, because there's a lot of cutscenes in the game, or enough. I think there's multiples inside each one of these, and these are just kind of like the execution files or whatever to the game will reference to say to play these or whatever but you don't want to remove these but sometimes um, there's like intros or credits or things that say like the Unreal Engine logo or the Havocs Engine logo or just the game developers logo and you can come in here and um, say it was this one that said you know introduction logo that you don't want you would come in here, leave it like it is, do a underscore shift line key to the right of the zero, and then to type BAK for back, like a back file, say yes, and it will just make it kind of like a new, um, new file. Or it would probably be a bit better to use dot, maybe just say dot, dot back, call it the dot backup file. And then the game won't see it because it'll be looking for the .cmv and it'll ignore it. Sometimes you'll get a black screen for logos and they'll still last the same amount of time as if you were just seeing the logo. And sometimes the game will just instantly skip it and go right to the menu of the uh, title screen. Or you can delete it, but this way you still have it. So you can come in here and just take the dot back off and then you got it back again like you never messed with it. And then it works when you start the game. This is not the case for these files. I was just saying in another game where they are labeled, these are 
actual good stuff. You don't want to turn these off. But this is a good reason to remember the movies file inside whatever game it is that you're playing. And then the splash, uh, this is the little thumbnail that uh, when you first, when you run the game from Steam, you'll see this for like, you know, a few seconds until the game actually executes. Um, if you find something online you want to use that's different for a given game, then you can just replace it if you don't like what that looks like. Just make sure it's the same size or close. It probably doesn't even have to be the same size, but make sure it's something similar. And if it's a BMP, do the same thing. Do a dot .bak, you know. Um, that would make it ignore it, or, you know, you can replace it. Make a copy. Make the original a dot .back and use the copy as the splash dot .bmp with something different. And then we'll get to this in a minute once I get further into here. I drug the video out a little longer here by explaining these, but I've never really gone into... And it doesn't mean I necessarily should in uh, every game I play, but Unreal Engine 4 games are very common, as well as Unity games. Um, so you will see those a lot. So you're going to see this structure for other Unity 4 games. They'll just say, you know, whatever. Um... Borderlands game, you know, if it was made in the uh, Unreal Engine, say. So anyway, there's that. We're not really going to be doing any manipulation here at all. But uh, in this video, we will be setting up Sticks 1 general and advanced settings where needed. This will hopefully put the game in the best playable state it can be. Then there will be... <laughs> I didn't change it. Then there will be a modding video that follows this video. There will not be a modding video. Change it. I must have changed it. There will not be a modding video that follows this video. There will not be a modding video. Yeah. You're probably saying, why, why worry about uh, fixing the text when you're already speaking it at this point? It's because I save all my notes for all my games in case I need to... Uh, reference anything or recover anything so there will not be a, a modding video that follows this video as there are no mods for this game as i already said at the end of the last video but there you go any links that are covered in this video will be in the description uh, below in this video that you're watching so the first category we're going to cover here is pre-options, adjustments, and info. So I'm going to start trying to do this. I haven't been doing it in every config and tech video, but I should just as a uh, baseline information uh, to give to you guys. Because these are important locations for PC games when you're playing them. Your save locations and your settings location. Um, and this is the path uh, or the folder you need to go to. Um, username and caps here, this is what you will need to change um, to whatever your username is. And then everything else should match up as long as you've installed your operating system on the C drive. But this path will take you to where your stick saves are put and kept, and this will take you to where your settings are kept. And you might as well go ahead and open this folder now because we're going to need it in a bunch of steps coming up here. Not a bunch, but a few. So the first main thing we're going to cover here is FPS frame rate adjustment. Um, smooth frame rate. Uh, this setting will smooth out your frame rate transitions. Uh, that's what it's supposed to do. Um, Kind of similar to another setting you'll see in games called uh, mouse smoothing, which I would usually never recommend using unless it's already off and you're doing what you normally do in a game with your mouse and it's still rough, then I would put it on. But in general, I would never turn mouse smoothing on by default. And in some cases, 
uh, frame rate smoothing is going to give you ill effects too. Um, you may find your FPS is worse uh, because of using it. So if that's the case, um, I would recommend since it's to do with frame rate, uh, not that mouse movement's any less important, but most likely you're not going to have an issue by turning this on as long as you have a really decent uh, computer. And this is an old game, so uh, I would recommend to go ahead and use this. So go to your setting file uh, location, which is up here. And this is where my shortcut is. I'm just going to open it and have it here. These are what we were seeing here under sticks game config. These are the same files, but the default versions before you play the game or if you don't configure anything, which is highly unlikely once you get into a game. So when you get into your config file, um, the other thing I should state too is these files are not going to exist until you actually start the game at least once. Uh, you don't have to make a save or start the game and then save your game. You just have to run the game once and then the game will generate these files and at, as they are right now, I mean mine are already edited, but yours will be the same settings as uh, Uh, they will be the same settings as what these are set up as, but these are the custom settings that we can adjust. So if you open this folder or the folder does not exist, it's because you need to run the game at least once. Just get at least to the menu and then quit out of the menu and then try to open the f uh, file. And once you get it open, you're going to look for the file in here called sticksengine.ini. So, um, this one. This is the main file that's going to have most of the settings. Anytime you edit an Unreal Engine 4, I don't know what Unreal Engine 5 is going to be like yet. But uh, engine, game, input, settings. Sometimes systems, system settings are ones that say user settings. Those are the important ones. Light, mass, entry, editor, credits, version. You're not really going to mess with these. This one's the primary one. So I have it open here now. It's in another tab. I still have my stuff here. So when you have that file open, you're going to look for find the line. What you can do is I can copy it, but you're going to have to type it. It's a B smooth frame rate. And you go to your Steam Engine I and I and you do Control F. And if it was something you pasted, you can Control V or just type it in and then press Enter and it will go to where it is. And so as you can see, here it is. And what I suggest you put it on. Uh, it may be on by default. I don't remember because I already had this game installed and uh, configured um, already before I started recording it for YouTube. So the default quite possibly could already be true. If it's on false, make it true. Close out your fine menu and then do uh, like a control S to save the INI file or go up to file and save or X out and save. Just save your setting once you do that. Um, yeah, there, there are two instances of this and I recommend changing them both. Make sure both lines say true. The first one's the most important, um, but the other is the second one. A little further down. So go ahead and just make sure they're both the same, just to be safe. Get back to the top of it. And as I said, if um, if your frame rate is bad or not good, then turn it back off. Put it on false on both lines. Just reverse what we did. The next option here is minimum and maximum uh, frame rate. This setting adjusts to your minimum and maximum frame rate. So the, for the minimum, go to the same file this time we're looking for minimum smooth frame rate. 
And by the way, these uh, things I'm showing you here, most of them, if not all, apply to all Unreal Engine 4 games. So they can be used across multiple games, these uh, tweaks I'm showing you. So we're going to go back, make sure you're at the top if you're searching, Control F, Control V, V, as in Victor, press Enter. You got minimum here, 30. Um, I don't, I think it's 20 is what the minimum was. I would set it to 30 because you obviously don't want any of these games ever really running 30, but definitely not anything below it. So I would classify that as a minimum. So make that your minimum and then search again because there's a second instance. Uh, do it twice, same as before. Back to the top. Make sure both say 30. Save your settings. Uh, right, I already said it. And then the max. There's a max smooth frame rate. Same exact thing. Except now we're looking for max. So I set mine to 60. I'm getting 60 as my uh, hertz on my television and my frame rate that I'm uh, aiming for. The game was designed for 60. You quite possibly could set it to 120, but uh, it'll break animations probably or screw up other things in the game. So I'd advise doing 30 for a minimum and 60 for a max. And once again, there's two versions. Oops. I'm screwing up everything here. There is two versions, so do it twice. And yeah, for B smooth rate, yeah, there's two minimum, there's two maximum, there's two. Okay. So yeah, I even said here, because I looked it up or I found information. Obviously, 6.1 is designed for 60 FPS. Uh, if you run a higher FPS, then you will encounter broken physics. Enemies can bounce around or go flying, meaning when you kill them or, you know, they become inactive. Uh, they'll do crazy stuff. I mean, that can be fun, obviously, and they'll do it anyway because of the cool physics in the game. Or the not-so-cool physics that end up being cool because they're kind of crazy. But I wouldn't recommend uh, going any higher than 60. Just out of experience with stuff, other games. Now we get to motion blur, depth of field, chromatic aberration, film grain. Um, these are effects in games that I always try to disable if I can, either through the options of the game or through the configuration files outside of the game. I just don't like these effects. Uh, motion blur is for, you can look up on Wikipedia so you can really learn, and I advise that you do. Look up anti-aliasing, um, look up anastropic filtering, um, bilinear filtering, look up these terms because if you're a PC gamer, if you're, and you don't know what they are, uh, you need to know what they are, and if you're coming from consoles to PC or whatever, um, these are things that are good to know, know what they do. So I advise you just research, do your own research and learn so you know how to adjust them based on your own tastes. But I'll give you a quick description here. Motion blur uh, applies usually to when you're in a game, say a first person shooter, and you're moving your camera around with your thumbstick or your mouse. It's the blur effect that you will see on your character's uh, arms, hands, or the gun, or all of it um, as it moves um, in the game world. Kind of like a uh, vapor trail. That's uh, what you'd call it, I guess. Um, that's what motion blur is. Depth of field is blurring the portion of the background that the developer or movie director in a movie doesn't want you to focus on. Uh, they want you to focus really on the foreground or something in a particular scene, so they blur background. Um, so motion blur, depth of field are both blurring uh, effects, and I just don't like blur of any kind. You know, you pay for a high-end PC, you want to see the good graphics. <laughs> I, I know it's to get a 
a movie effect or whatever across, but I don't want stuff to be blurred. Chromatic aberration, um, that one's a little harder to explain. <laughs> um, we'll look that up together here. I don't know why I opened two at the same time. So, chromatic aberration. I don't want to give you a uh, false description. Um, is there something that relates it in gaming? Because it's obviously more than just in gaming. Chromatic aberration is a screen-based method that mimics lens distortions. This technique uh, can be utilized to give your video game scenes in classic a classic lo-fi and analog feel or to make it feel more cinematic. Um, yeah, it kind of does this... I mean, this is A-listing. I don't know that it's really... Well, I guess it probably is. Uh, I don't know why you would want it to look like that in this uh, high quality of a game. But it's like kind of a color vapor trail again. It's kind of a blurring technique and a lens distortion. But it's a weird color distortion effect. It's like a bl color blur is what I guess I would call that. A colored blur is a good description. And then film grain. You know what film grain is. It's in Silent Hill games and games that just try to look really gritty. Um, they can make a dark game overly dark. I think a lot of times they ruin the uh, graphical quality of a game. It depends on how it's used, but generally I turn it off. So all four of these settings, if you're like me and you hate these settings, use this method to force off, uh, force them off in the Unreal Engine itself. This applies for Unreal Engine 4. Um, I'm sure you can do this in Unreal Engine 3 and 2 and whatnot, and even 5 that I think is already out. I don't know. I think there's a handful of games. I heard or read the other day that the new Layers of Fear uh, remake uh, re of a remaster, I don't know what it is, um, kind of the anthology that just came out. It's the first horror game made in Unreal Engine 5. So I don't know if you can apply these the same way, but I know that these work 99.9% uh, in uh, Unreal Engine 4 all the time. So you go to the same file, Sticks Engine I and I. What you can do and what I do is I scroll to the very bottom of uh, this I and I. Uh, let's see, note these commands are usable in all Unreal Engine 4. Paste the commands, following commands. Um, so you'll see here at the very end of my I and I. Did I not tell you to? I did tell you to. Yeah, you need to make sure you have this category heading as long as well as the uh, all the R dot whatevers, just like I do. Um, another thing I will uh, mention, since it's relevant, not necessarily to this. Let me check my own file. If you right-click the I and I and go to properties you'll see a uh, read-only attribute checkbox that you can check or uncheck and apply. This means that you can only look at this file. You can't make any changes like we are. Or if you've made changes, nothing can revert them without you doing it yourself because you're locking people out. When you put the read-only, it's like putting a padlock on the file. And the only way to unlock it so you can do anything other than read it is to uncheck it and apply it. In some situations, maybe even in some of these Unreal Engine 4 settings, not this game, you can make changes, but as soon as you save them and then you play the game, the game will just remove them automatically from the file because it sees them when it looks through it. It knows they're not supposed to be there, or that it didn't put them there, and then it takes them away. So a way around that is to put them in and then come into your file, right-click, Properties, go to Properties. I'll show you again. Right-click, Properties. 
and then click read only and apply. And then when you try to uh, let me save. Yeah, it's not even letting me. Uh, where it is? Let me close. It's not letting me close. It's fine, whatever. So let me reopen it. Just try to make a change. It's not even letting me type for some reason. I can type here. Why can't I? Oh, that's why I can't type. Okay, I see the lock in my program here. So it won't, this particular program, this is called, uh, what am I using? Notepad++, and it has a dark mode. That's why I'm using it, so I don't have to freaking see this instead. <laughs> I don't want to look at this. That's, that's uh, too bright. I deal with chronic migraines, so I'm always in a kind of a dark room, and I'm like a vampire. I avoid the lights. So I found uh, Notepad++. It's free. It's just like a souped-up version of Notepad. And uh, you can get a black mode with white text. This makes it easier on the eyes. And I'm sure it makes it easier for you guys watching the video. I hope it does. So I think if you're opening this, let me open it in Notepad. Open with Notepad. Notepad will still let you type and try to mess with it. But when you save, it'll say... Yeah, I want to save, but then it tries to make you make a new file or something. And when you try to save it, it says it already exists. You want to replace it. Set to read only. Try again with a different name. So you're going to get something like that when you try to mess with it. But uh, Notepad++ just completely locks you out. doesn't even let you type. So I just tell you this because of the game, a lot of games, and I don't know. It's just random which games are going to do it. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it. I think uh, some Unreal Engine games can automatically revert it. Uh, I know for this game particularly, you don't have to do it. So just leave it alone. But if you put the settings in and you're like, hey, well, there's still motion blur or depth of field still going on with the crap, you know. Check your INI file again and look at the bottom because it's or whatever you've changed on whatever file that you didn't do this read only thing to and uh, make it read only. But this applies to uh, game settings um, that you would change in the menu too. So that means if you're playing the game and you decide, oh, I feel like using a motion blur now, you know. You might be able to initiate it from the menu and it actually work during that gameplay session. But when you come back and load your save or start the game again, it's going to be off if you put it off in the file here and you put it read only. So just uh, remember that if you're cool with how you have all the settings in the game, and you're not going to screw with them and you like what you've uh, put in down here, then uh, I wouldn't advise to always put it in read only mode at all. Um, because this would apply to anything like you might want to increase your mouse sensitivity not in this game because you shouldn't use a mouse you should use a gamepad but if you wanted to change your brightness or something you're not going to be able to to do that <laughs> so only say uh put them in read only mode if it's not taking your settings to begin with and i'm break break down here uh, what these are uh, some are more explanatory than others like these a couple here but the first three lines are from motion blur line four is for depth of field line five and six um, yeah, here's depth of field five and six here uh, are for chromatic aberration and then these last two seven and eight are for film grain so r dot and these commands is what you use and then equals zero or equals one uh, on or off. Zero's off, one is on. So I'm trying to disable film grain, chromatic, depth of field, and motion blur. And this is okay to do even if the game, which I believe this game does, have a motion blur option in the menu, which is fine. But it's not going to hurt anything either to do it this way as well. Um, I just keep this in a text file personally. This right here, I have it saved into Unreal Engine 4 uh, 
you know, configuration info. So I can always just go like, okay, this whatever game I'm playing, it's an Unreal Engine 4. I go in and open this file, I copy and paste into whatever the INI is that I'm working with, whatever engine.ini I'm working with. So that I always know if the menu's not going to let me do it, I'm going to force it to begin with. And then you can go in the menu and you can always uh, set it to what you want to be to. Because just because you do it in here, it may not necessarily reflect it in the menu, even though it may be off, it should. But if it's still on in the menu, I'm going to turn it off too. But some things like film grain, it may be in the game and you may not want to use it, but there's no option to disable it. So this is your method, you know, with Unreal Engine 4 to get rid of it if it was there. Okay, so now we'll, uh, we'll look at all this directly in the files and I will uh, show, show you how it should look. Show you how it should look. Which I already did. So very bottom. You don't have to bold this or anything. It's just the uh, notepad plus plus bolting it. It's just bracket, no spaces, system settings, bracket, and then as it looks here. And then save it and close it. So all the main configurations are basically there. Most anything you're really going to do, I think, or that we're going to do. Most of it. Now we're going to get into some anti-aliasing uh, tweaks. Um, okay, the game doesn't have any anti-aliasing settings uh, for some weird reason. You can either force it on in your NVIDIA or your AMD graphics card. You can also use Reshade to force uh, SMAA into the game, which is what I will be doing for Styx 1. Because uh, the Reshade AA that you can put in is better than what you can put in through just your general graphics driver. At least speaking for NVIDIA, I don't know what AMD does. Um, so forcing it into the game using your GPU is going is going to be good enough for most people. So I'm using Reshade, Reshade for a couple of reasons. I'm using it for aliasing, a uh, slightly better aliasing method, or anti-aliasing method. And I also do color tone adjustments. I just kind of have a general preset that's, you know, something I use and I really probably shouldn't <laughs> necessarily be using it in every game, and I don't use it in every game. Um, either I don't use Reshade at all because I don't think the game needs it, or uh, I test the preset that I generally try to use in each game to adjust colors and apply the anti-aliasing if necessary, and if it doesn't look good then I turn the coloring part off, but I try to adjust color to make it look a little more natural. I'm not going for any special color gradient. I do try to take a lot of the blue tint that's out of horror games. Um, so anyway, this game being as old as it is, and it looks pretty decent, there's not horrendous uh, anti-aliasing in this game anyway. Uh, but I would recommend using some form of it. But um, yeah, I'll show you how to do this here through your graphics card. So for me, uh, I go to my NVIDIA you can right click on the desktop and get to this option too and I go to NVIDIA control panel pop it up here once it loads you got your global presets uh, just how you have your general stuff set up that everything uses go to program settings and if you've ran sticks, sticks recently or if it was one of the last games you've ran it'll be in the list already or if you click add It'll show up at the top. If not, you can browse, look for the executable once you get it in here so that you're working with particularly the sticksgame.exe. This is where you can apply individual settings because by default I don't force AA in NVIDIA. I usually don't use it at all through NVIDIA since I use Reshade for uh, anti-aliasing most times. But you go in here, you'll uh, go to anti-aliasing mode, and you're going to have an enhance the application setting or override any application setting. 
generally I would advise to put it on override. And when you do that, anti-aliasing setting is going to become available because when that is off, which my global setting is, um, I have to reapply it. Hold on just a second. Let me get everything back to default. When global mode is off, um, which I'm talking about global settings, application controls. So that means NVIDIA is not controlling it. But when mode is off, you can't even adjust settings. It's grayed out. Uh, as you can see, it's a lighter gray. So you have to do mode first. Do override if you don't notice a difference, which you may not anyway, even if it is working. <laughs> but uh, if it's not working, switch it to enhanced. But generally go for override. And then take anti-aliasing setting and bump that sucker all the way to 8x. And then apply. And that's going to give you... Um, there's also anti-aliasing transparency. When you look at the tooltip there, it says allows you to minimize the visible aliasing on the edges of images with transparent textures. Um, off the top, I don't know what to tell you to use for this, but I would recommend just using um, off and just go with these two settings. Apply and this will give you general anti-aliasing for the game. That's how you would go about it. And I'm going to go and turn mine back off because I'm using reshade. Reapply. Apply your settings and then close. That's how you would force it. Next thing I want to discuss is quick saving and quick loading. Uh, this game has the ability to quick save and quick load anytime you want. I mean, you can save your game whenever you want and just quit and come back right where you are. Uh, once you get to chapter ends is when you can do your uh, physical or hard saves in the game. So if you look at your keyboard keybinds in the game, um, when you're in the menus, uh, you'll notice uh, there are a quick save and a quick load keybind that you can use. And it's by default. And I believe it's hard coded. I don't think you can rebind these keys um, but they are visible in there uh, if they're listed then maybe you can they might be grayed out I forget I don't play this game with keyboard and mouse uh, but it's F5 for saving quick saving and F9 for quick loading you can't change these keys hence why they are grayed out okay sorry I didn't read ahead but F5 will let you quick save F9 will let you node um, that being said, this game is intended for a gamepad, which I advise you to use. I'll be using an Xbox One controller. Unfortunately, the developers didn't put keybinds on the gamepad to allow you to quick save or quick load, uh, which is a big oversight um, because the two thumbsticks, the left and the right, on your gamepad do nothing when you push them in because uh, they click and push in like normal buttons. Uh, in a first-person shooter, the uh, stick, you know, might make you run, uh, be your run button. But they do nothing in this game. There's no keybinds applied to them. So uh, they could have easily... Uh, my way around this is to use a keybinding program like Joy to Key, uh, which allows you to assign keyboard keys to a gamepad. Otherwise, you're going to be playing with your gamepad and having to press F5 or F9 on your keyboard, which is not convenient and awkward, obviously. Um, I'm not going into detail on how to use Joy to Key in this video, as it is beyond the scope of what I want to include here. But I want to let you know that's a good program. It's the one I use when I need keyboard keys that I can't change or aren't available on a gamepad and I might want to make them available on the gamepad for situations just like this. So if there's interest from viewers then I will consider making a dedicated video on uh, how to use Joy to Key. It's not too difficult. Leave me a comment in this video if you need help getting it to work or if you're interested in me making a dedicated video. Here's a link right here where you can get the uh, actual program that I'm talking about. But what I'm getting at 
is you can use these thumbsticks, which is what I'm doing. Um, I'm putting the F5 key on my left thumbstick button push in, and I'm putting the F9 key, keyboard key, on my right thumbstick push in. So then I can quick save or quick load at any time I want on the gamepad and not have to use the keyboard. But I do have to have Joy to Key running uh, down, you know, in the, in the uh, task manager. But if you already have it or know how to use it, then that's one reason I'm not going to really talk about it. Um, and if you need help, it's not difficult. And I'll show you uh, um, how, to, how to do it, um, or I can tell you. It's not a big deal. So the last thing here, not the last thing, but the last thing in this section is a replaying missions bug. This is a uh, note from the PC Game Wiki for this game. Um, replaying missions at certain points in the story will lock further progress. It is not recommended to replay missions until after finishing the game. When you beat a chapter before you go to the next one, you have an option to replay the previous chapters you've already completed to try to do more, uh, get a certain achievements, uh, get items you might missed. Um, you're not going to be allowed out of the chapter unless you have all the things you actually need, but if you wanted to go back for collectibles or whatnot, um, that's what this is referring to. And it says earlier threads on this topic suggest that it happens if you replay chapter one before playing two, same with five and six, and I believe three and four. The bug can happen whenever you have a cutscene sequence uh, in the hideout, which is the hub world, which triggers the passage to the next chapter. Since replays don't trigger the cutscene, the passage doesn't open. That would mean the passage to the transition to the next level meaning you would basically kind of like soft lock yourself in the game. Um, so I'd advise anything you really want to do uh, that is going to benefit you in that playthrough, um, do it the first time around. Or obviously you can go back at the end of the game when you've beat every chapter, uh, then you're not going to have an issue because you've already unlocked every chapter. But do what you want to do uh, while you're playing it so that you don't have to repeat it. Like there's things, it's not a spoiler or nothing, but there's these relics in certain levels you can pick up. Um, they can be tricky or hard to miss. Uh, you might miss them and not. you might have been looking for them and forgot, you know, and went ahead and completed the level and been like, oh crap, I missed that. I want to go back and get it, but that's something you should wait uh, until you beat the game on so that you don't soft lock yourself. I've never had this happen and I didn't know about this bug any time that I've ever played it, but it's documented so I would trust that it can happen. So that's all the preliminary stuff. Now we're going to get to this. This will go quickly. These are the main options in the game. The first category uh, you're going to have is game settings which is subtitles. I recommend using them. I use them when I do my own playthroughs or when I put stuff on YouTube. Um, display of detection. This is when enemies uh, in the game are alerted to your status, uh, kind of like the explanation point that pops up above people's heads in Metal Gear. Uh, this is whether you want to see that or not, to know it's occurred or not, making the game more difficult by uh, deactivating it. I would leave it on. Display of objectives, I would leave it on, kind of like a waypoint. Next category is controls. There are a few different modes uh, you can pick from here. I'll be using mode A, basically like your control type for the game. A game might have a one, two, or three mode or an ABC. This is just the first one. I'm just using the default. Keyboard and mouse adjust your keys as you see fit if using these controls, which I don't advise. This is way better to play with a gamepad. This is one of those games where your movement, you can either slow walk or you can normal walk uh, based on how much you're pressing the button. But that only applies to having a thumbstick on a gamepad. When you press the arrow keys or the W key 
S key on your keyboard, you're going to get the full walk speed. So when you're playing on gamepad, you have the option to creep even slower, which is a benefit in a stealth game. Uh, camera sensitivity, I have it set to the middle point. It's just how quick your camera moves when you look around. Uh, invert the vertical axis or the horizontal axis, deactivate that. Just That just makes it so when you look, you press up on the thumbstick, you'll look down. When you press up, uh, you'll look up. Just leave it default. Next category is graphics, um, global settings. Set this to high. It will change to custom once we adjust all settings here. Uh, full screen, activate that. In general, um, I've always heard and done it this way and just do it in general. I always make games full screen because you're supposed to get the best performance doing that, meaning uh, full or max frame rate, or hopefully max frame rate. Resolution, I'm using 1920 by 1080 because that's my television specs. I don't have a 4K TV. Brightness, uh, the middle point should be fine. I set mine a notch above the middle because I run my game a little darker. Sync uh, vertical, this is the same thing as V-Sync or vertical sync, basically locking your FPS or your frame rate, which is a good idea to do. The only real reasons not to is if you're really, really picky about um, input lag with your keyboard, mouse, or gamepad, which you would be if you're a speedrunner. Um, but in general, it's not that big a deal. I've never seen it be that big a deal for just casual, normal play of the game. But V-Sync will keep your frame rate from exceeding higher than it needs to, or should. You don't need 500 frame rate going uh, when you're playing a game, when your monitor or TV is only capable of 60. Um, it may look fine, but you're just pushing your uh, graphics card to work way harder than it needs to, which is going to destroy it physically quicker, uh, decrease its lifespan over time. It's just unnecessary. But I advise uh, activating it and using it, and you should be at 60 FPS. Uh, light shafts, this is just a lighting effect in the game how lights come through like in a window or just I think it's also something they used to call God mode God mode uh, that's invincibility God rays I don't think they call it that anymore I think they call it light shafts so use it for good lighting effects uh, anastropy this is the same thing as anastropic filtering um, in general like how the floor textures will look uh, the ground or the floor or whatever the surface is when you're in a building or a room. Set this to 16. You should be good. It's going to make things look better. You're not going to notice any performance hit. Not in this game. Uh, quality of textures high. Dynamic shadows high. Depth of field uh, deactivate. You've already forced it off in the uh, option uh, settings file if you uh, did that already. But go ahead and deactivate it in the game too. Same thing with motion blur, bloom. That's up to your uh, discretion if you like bloom or not. Um, I do. Uh, a lot of older games, especially 90s games, tended to overuse it to the point of oversaturating, uh, oversaturating the uh, brightness in the uh, game, causing a contrast issue or a brightness issue at that point. But uh, go ahead and use it. I would I'd say to use it. Uh, so activate it. Distortions. This is probably some type of blur, uh, which I don't like. But in this case, since this is called distortions, uh, I don't know exactly what that's applying to. So I went ahead and activated it. But if that actually is where, um, see, motion blur and depth of field, they have their own category of effect. So I don't know what that is applying to. But if motion blur didn't and you knew you didn't want it and it fell under that category, then it wouldn't matter if we had it on here or not because the motion blur setting in the um, 
config file would have automatically turned it off. So in this case, I would say leave it on. Uh, but you can turn it off, and you probably wouldn't be missing much. Distant objects, this is how far away uh, you're going to be able to see certain objects, or how clear, how high quality they're going to look. Since this is an old game, you know, whatever, decent computer, uh, halfway decent computer, you'll be able to do this, so just activate it. Next category is sound. Uh, yeah, and I was going to tell you, uh, making these adjustments here is going to make the global setting up here for graphics turn to custom, so that's okay. But if you turn change it back to high, then uh, you'll lose a few adjustments that we did manually here, so just remember that. So for sounds, uh, global at your master volume line or switch, put that at 100, sound effects at 100, voices at 100, any talking, and then in general, especially if you think the game is mixing sound effects and music well, then it would be okay to leave this at 100. If it doesn't, then put it at 50. And if you're recording for YouTube and the game seems to have really loud music, which this game kind of can, so I said better for recording as the game, as the music can be loud for this particular game. Not every game. But because I am recording for YouTube and I've already tested this a little, um, I'm going to put it at 50. And then do my normal decibel adjustments I do in editing to get everything at a equal level so everything sounds balanced and it hopefully sounds volume-wise similar to the last series that I played and so forth. That's how I'm doing sound. And so we'll finish this video by going into the game and I will run down these settings we just covered with you. Um, in the next video we'll be getting into the gameplay. Um, these settings, meaning just these little simple few ones here, starting with uh, the game category. There's game, controls, graphics, and it's just sound, right? Yeah, sound. The other stuff I've already showed you. So I'd like to finish these videos by going into the game and showing you what we were talking about physically. I think it's good to show people uh, if you're a teacher of any kind or you're just trying to show somebody how to do something, I think it's a good idea to have a visual uh, method, kind of a hands-on visual method and a uh, text uh, method. Some people learn better by written uh, information and other people learn better by a visual or a hands-on, you know, like a real-world experience, you know, how to cut a piece of wood in half with a hacksaw, you know, the right way or something. You need to kind of do it physically. You can't just read about it and do it right. So that's why I take the extra time to go into the game and do this for each game. I like to be uh, pretty thorough um, with how I do these uh, config and tech and the modding videos. The information videos are intended to be just, you know, slightly informative. So I'm going to do a quick uh, edit cut here. We'll just transition into uh, uh, the ending part of this config and tech video with an end game. Uh, look at the options. And then the next video, um, we will be getting straight into the gameplay. There's no modding. So I thank you for watching. I know this video is a little long, but I hope uh, it's informative and interesting uh, for the few handful of nerds out there that like this stuff. So, quick edit cut, and we'll see you there. Bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Config and Tech Videos in-game options overview. <laughs> I guess that's what we'll call it. I've mu muted the music so uh, it doesn't drown me out. You can hear my talking better. So you're just hearing sound effects and ambience right now. Uh, so let's check out the options. So here's the game options, the four categories that we uh, looked at before. Here's where your subtitles and your uh, whether you want to be able to 
have the display of detected enemies or the display of objectives. So this is how I'm using it. And controls controller here is how you can see. Here's the A mode I'm using. You can kind of get an idea of general stuff when I get into the, any of these games uh, in the first gameplay video. Uh, I like to go over the controls, so I'm not really going to say much right here, because I plan to do that anyway in that video. But as you can see, the L stick and the right stick, left stick is for moving around your dude uh, sticks in third person, and the camera is for moving what you're seeing, but there's no thumb press uh, action tied to those keys so like I said before you go grab joy to key get the commands in to uh, assign the two F keys function keys on the keyboard to be usable on the mouse or not the mouse the uh, thumbstick clicks then you can have that on your gamepad it's just so weird that um, they only make it <clears throat> excuse me, convenient to quick save and quick load if you use keyboard and mouse, but if you're using the game pads, you're just screwed. So I just changed here. You can see the difference. B t changes from drop and crouch to uh, drop and roll, and RB changes from roll to crouch. You can crouch and you can roll, like roll away. It's only those keys, really, that are getting altered, no matter what you do. So B is either crouch, drop means to let go of a ledge. Uh, you're either able to crouch, roll. Okay, there's only A and B. I thought there was a C. And then with RB, it's either crouch or roll. So you're just flopping, crouch and roll. That's why I just left it on A. All right, so that's the gamepad. Keyboard and mouse, we'll just glance at so you can see what's here. Kill, parry, take cover, roll, interact, use item, jump, pause, walk. So I take that back. I did say if you use a keyboard to play this game, you can't slow walk. You can, but you're just going to have to press another key in conjunction. Uh, so I was incorrect about that. Still, it's more comfortable to play with a gamepad. I highly advise it. Get yourself a Xbox controller off Amazon. They're not that expensive. Make noise. That's a distraction. You can have clones in this game. There's kind of like, there's magic in this. It's very fantasy. I wouldn't rest really... I've been debating with myself, am I even going to put this in the horror category in my playlist on my homepage? And I don't know if I will. Uh, so these are just different things. Mission menu, briefing page, like your objective. Your mad skills, your relics, which those are collectibles. Uh, the walking, but yeah, I want you to see here, this is how you know you can even quick save or quick load, because if you don't even ever look in here, because you're just rocking the controller from the get-go, then you won't even know that you have that ability to do this. But it's grayed out. You can't um, uh, you can't force this onto the game pad. At least not that I know of. Uh, with the game files, and I've just had this easier way around it because I already had Joy to Key. So they're grayed out. Not meaning they're not turned on. It just means you can't rekey bind them to nothing. Not even another keyboard key. They're just like. Like, those are dev, dev key binds for quick saving and quick loading, you know, must be. They're awkward and, <clears throat> excuse me, out of place. Even if you're using WASDA for movement um, on the keyboard, it's not convenient to press those, really. But, there you go. Nice to know in any game <laughs> that you can quick save and quick load. That takes a little bit of the stress off of you. I mean, I'm going to try to not spam quick save. 
but hopefully there won't be a lot of dying, so there won't be a lot of quick loading, <laughs> so then I won't get used to safe scumming. But camber sensitivity in the middle, inversion, deactive, unless you want your up to be down or your down to be up, you know, whichever way you want it to be. Graphics, the global, put it on uh, hard, or what did I say hard for? Put it on high. Or if custom's already there, put it on that. And then you're manually adjusting all this other. Uh, your brightness can vary. You might, you probably should put it in the middle, I would recommend. I know that I'm running my settings darker uh, for myself, but by the time they get to YouTube, the way they're recorded and all that, uh, they're going to be a different brightness, but I'm using a notch above um, in this game, but it's already going to be brighter when you see it. <coughs> so I would advise you initially to have it on the middle point, just back it up one more vertical sync to lock your frame rate so you can see my numbers up here my monitoring numbers for my graphics card memory my computer memory my computer temper my graphics temperature my computer temperature meaning my CPU temperature my graphics fan percent that it's spinning and then my graphics card usage that's what all that means the G's and the C's just represent the computer side of it or the graphics side of it and then it's a DirectX 9 game, 60 FPS. I'm using an RTX 2070 Super um, MSI with the ray tracing and all that fancy stuff, which doesn't even matter for this game. As you see it kind of going up to 61. So some games, they may say they're, or it's maxed at 60, but if it ever moves, you, you really only will see it drop to 59. But some games, on the rare occasion, you'll see it jump to 61 real quick. Sometimes that can be bad and can give you that one frame of stutter that you might be having in your game. And in that case, it's better to manually lock your frame rate to 59. Uh, I'd have to show you how to do that. You need another program, something I haven't covered. But consider that if you're able to monitor your frame rate, even if you're at 60 or you're at 120, if you're one frame rate popping over and you see it, like it just showed it there if you watch it, I want you to see it happen. It'll go to 61 here. <coughs> Excuse me. There it goes. So any stuttering the game may have, which I don't remember it having any, but if it did have any, and it was very framey, like a frame of it. It felt like it was just a millisecond of stutter. It's probably because you realistic, realistically should be locking the frame rate at 59 or um, locking it at uh, 119 if you were going for 120, I guess. Which you shouldn't be because going above 60 in this game breaks uh, physics animations. Anyway, there's my numbers. You can see how much memory the game takes out of my uh, actual computer memory and my graphics card memory. It's not a, a lot. And you can see how hot my graphics card and my um, CPU are getting and, and how much uh, actual load is on my fans and my overall card usage. So, I mean, I'm not, it'll obviously be different when we're in the game playing, but, you know, there's animation happening here and there's high quality graphics going. So anyway, I'm rambling on here. Light shafts, uh, X, 16X, high, high. Only if you don't, unless you liked at the field. Um, there's a point I remember when I first discovered, not depth of field being good or bad, but um, I discovered playing this game in a section and I realized how much better the game looked in the scene with depth of field off and I'm gonna wait until I get into that part of the game. It's somewhere like in the early mid to mid part of the game. It's just a cool little outdoor transition scene where you're on like a bridge and you can see a lot of the uh, kind of the landscape of what's around the buildings behind you. 
but I'll show you then how depth of field looks and then how it doesn't look. Um, so it's going to be off up to that point. Motion blur off, bloom activated, distortion activated just because I don't know exactly what's that, what is that affecting, you know, how many different things is that affecting. Distant objects activated, global settings. The <laughs> this is where I always get confused because if you hold, if you keep pressing down or whatever, you just keep looping this graphic settings and you think, man, this freaking game has like 50 settings, dude. But it just loops. The first setting is a global setting and then it ends on distant objects and then you just loop. So once you get back to that, just apply your stuff if you've made any changes. And you're good. The last setting is the sounds. Global is the master volume. Same thing. Sound effects 100. Voice is 100. And music I'm going to put at the middle. Um, you can hear it a little bit here when it kicks in. I just have it off so it didn't drown out my voice. Because the music's kind of banging in this game. It's got crazy violins and stuff. As you heard in the introduction... I'll go ahead and put it back to where it's going to be. I just turned it off so you could hear me talking better. The way I like to do is the introduction videos. It's super loud. The introduction videos I like to uh, have the background music going uh, for uh, the game I'm playing just because, you know, that has significance. People remember the theme of the title screen from when they first played a game. You know, a lot of title screens and games have really kick-ass music, so I want to showcase those. That's why I let those play, even though I'm talking over those. I just really try to lower the volume on them, even more than I do probably whenever I'm actually playing the game and just talking. Um, and in the config and tech videos, I tend to have nothing in the background, just my voice, so that you can focus on just what I'm saying and the text and what I'm showing you. Um, the same thing in this part of the config and tech videos that I always try to do where I come in and show the general options. I'm generally not going to have music going, especially if it's something crazy like this game has. <laughs> so, I like the uh, music in this game. It's just really thumping, even at 50%. Alright, so... Hopefully I'll remember I'll delete my uh, test uh, test saves because you can you can uh, delete your saves, quick saves, auto saves, and your main saves. Now don't pay attention to that 47%. This was just a uh, I beat this game uh, five times, six times, maybe all on normal. This was just an incomplete last playthrough. Um, I don't know that I've 100 percented this game, but I've like high 90 something percented it. So that don't just ignore that. That's just uh, this isn't even testing. I still had this save when I came back to the game to record it for YouTube. So I've been using it um, as my test for getting it ready for YouTube instead of just starting a new game because it was already here. So I can just quick load come out and quick load again, but I was only 47% through on this playthrough, but I'm going to delete it when I'm ready to start a new game. So I thank you for watching the config and tech uh, video, and we'll be getting straight to the mod, uh, not the modding, the uh, gameplay next. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.